Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and sorry this is quite late, but this is the 20,000 subscriber Q&A. Um, I'm sorry I haven't got back to this. I've been really busy. As you guys may know, I was on holiday with Peppy Pepper. She was here in the UK. The vlog will probably have gone up by the time that you see this video, so I really hope that you guys have enjoyed that. And also that quite a few of the questions that you asked, such as how did I meet the Peppy Pepper, are answered in the summer vlog, so definitely go and check that out. So just a big thank you to you all for staying with me, I really appreciate it. And here you go, here's your 20,000 subscriber Q&A. So Mayhill Green asks, you're obviously a very committed player, how do you maintain your interest? I've got about 9,500 battles now, and I'm finding it hard to maintain enthusiasm for the game, it's starting to seem repetitive. How do you keep yourself interested? Well firstly thank you very much for a very interesting question, Mayhill Green. Now the game in itself is very repetitive, but when you look at a lot of the most played games in the market, they're all very repetitive. Poker is very repetitive for an example. You're simply doing the same thing again and again, time after time after time. But I guess in poker there's a monetary value to it, so that's why it, it, people like it. It's sort of a game with sort of, it's, it's kind of like gambling, but it's not really gambling because there's a lot of skill in it. So I like to set myself goals. I remember maybe a year and a half ago now, before I was a unicum, I set myself a goal. I said, I want to get there. Now, I'm not saying that that is a realistic goal for everyone, but you've got to find a goal that's right for you. Maybe it's to try and get your efficiency up 100 points. Maybe it's, or your WN7 up 100 points. Maybe it's to try and improve your win ratio. Maybe it's just to not rage in the game all the time and to just have fun. Maybe you want to get a new tank that allows you to participate in some tank companies or even a tier 10 tank and start to do some clan wars. It's completely up to you, but I fully recommend that you set yourself goals because that's really the only way you can remain interested in World of Tanks considering it does have, as you rightly pointed out, a repetitive nature. One thing I must point out, guys, is that a lot of my interests stems from you. You guys are completely epic and you make playing World of Tanks an absolute joy. I love making content for you and I want to keep doing it. So a lot of my interest in World of Tanks is probably because of you guys. Thanks a lot for the question. So Jason Thatch asks, do you play any sports? Not right now. This sort of whole YouTube business and streaming has really taken over a lot of my free time. Apart from going to the gym and trying to keep fit, I don't really participate in any sports right now. When I was younger and I was at school, I did all the sports, all the sports. I played a hell of a lot of cricket, lots of rugby. I even had a shot at hockey, which was quite fun. I did a lot of what the Americans would call track and field, what might be known in Europe more as athletics. I'm very lucky to be quite an active sporty person. When I went to university, I did jiu-jitsu for a couple of years, which I really enjoyed. That sort of replaced playing sports for me. It's more of a combat sport, really, and I fully recommend that you go and get into something like that if you're interested in a great workout and an opportunity to learn how to defend yourself. Now all I do is basically work out at home and occasionally, very, very, very occasionally go to the gym. That's it. Thank you very much for your question. So Tose91 asks, what's your favorite map and why? And what map do you hate to play in? Okay, so I thought about this and I think that my favorite map has to be Steps on Encounter. Now, why is this? Because I find it's a very interesting map. It's a constant balance between the east and the west, but there's also an opportunity for the center of the map to be used as an aggressive tactic. I love the ridges. I love the fact that the map really heavily favors gun depression, and it also heavily favors people who want to actively scout the map. I feel that that map is great for every tank. Tank destroyers can camp at the back and provide supporting fire. Heavy tanks can get out of fire from artillery and try and hold some of the pinnacle locations. Medium tanks can use the ridge lines and aggressive spotting positions to maintain vision for their team and get lots of experience that way. And the light tanks, it's just a lovely open map which they can bomb it about on, use the ridge lines, escape from the enemy, push the right locations. And artillery, well, it's a lovely open map for you guys and you've got opportunities to hide at the back of both bases. I think it's a fantastic map and I love the encounter on it. What map do I hate to play? I hate to play maps which I consider to be unfair. At the moment, I think that Redshire on standard mode is unfair because I feel that the team from the north have an overwhelming advantage of the ridge line that goes all the way across the middle. This allows them to put fire right from the middle of the map where it feels like the southern team has to really try and push either east or west. For me, Redshire feels like an assault map. I feel like the northern team can just defend the middle and the southern team have to basically play assault. 
Also, the new map that was recently released in 8.7 is pretty brutal. I feel that the southern team has got an overwhelming advantage and the northern team really have to find new tactics to be able to make it work. Anyway, Toast say 91 thank you very much for your question. So Nicholas Hermanson asks, can you do a top five tanks in your opinion that needs a buff and needs a nerf? with wise of course. Jeez Louise. So let's talk about tanks that need a buff. Okay, just I'm going to do this off the top of my head. BK4502 needs a buff because it's not really competitive outside of playing it like a giant medium tank, but keep your eyes out. I'm going to be putting up a VK4502 review very soon. I think that the mouse is having a brutal time at the moment with the amount of heat rounds and tier 10 tank destroyers are in the game. I don't exactly know how I would buff it, but it can still be used effectively. All I can say is that you very rarely see mouses in tier 10 games these days. I think that the T25-2 needs a buff. It has no armor and it's got a very weak gun for a tier 7 TD. It's barely got more DPM than the previous tank in its tier, the Hellcat. I really think that that tank needs a buff. Okay, so I'm just going to do a top 3 to make this more manageable, because otherwise this will take me quite a lot of time. Okay, so my top three tanks that need nerfs. Okay, KV-1S, because it's just got insane alpha damage for tier 6 with great mobility and quite trollish armor. The T-57 Heavy needs a massive nerf because it's just able to just do too much too quickly. And I would say also probably I'd suck out and say something like the T-54E1 needs a nerf as well. So far in the T-51E1, I've played 20 games and we can see that I'm averaging 1,250 experience, over 3,000 damage, and I'm getting over two kills a game. It's a pretty brutal tank. Darth Bysos says, do I have any pets? And if don't, what kind would I like to have? Okay, I used to have two dogs and a cat, but they passed away when I was quite young. If I had to have a pet right now, I don't know. Me and Pepe always joke around that we'd like to have some cute little fat dog. I don't know, I think small little fat things are very funny. It'd be quite fun to have something like a Shih Tzu as well. I think they've got a really nice attitude. So thanks a lot for the interesting question. So Hanjo Kiyasu, you haven't joined the YouTube Dream Stream. Why? I, I, I wasn't invited. This is a question that gets asked all over YouTube at the moment. I simply wasn't invited. Just to clarify for this, I was effectively asked by an individual who is on said Dream Team to, I guess, work with him individually. At no point was I said it was going to be a tank company with all the biggest YouTubers, many of which who I get on quite well with. I guess this guy took it upon himself to then say that I didn't want to work with any of them. I think there's a very big difference between working with an individual guy and coming together with the whole of the YouTube community and creating something that's really cool. When the Dream Team videos came out, it was very interesting to see that a lot of the big YouTubers were very quick to say, Quickie baby declined. This is frankly a lie, and I was quite amazed that they tried to pull this off in public. You guys are quite smart. You'll be able to figure out why it would be in their interest to make me sound like some maniacal evil villain sitting in a tower just wanting to play with myself and refusing to work with anyone in the community. Hopefully you guys will appreciate some of the work that I do for World of Tanks. And you guys give me so much back, and I'm so thankful for it. Thank you all so much. So moving on, Mr. JPFX says, QB, it has to be done this time. You bottled it last time. What is behind the door? Are you serious? Guys, I'm wearing some embarrassing pajama bottoms because it's so bloody hot in the UK at the moment. All right, I will show you what is behind the door. Hold on, let me just make my camera bigger for a second. Dun, 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 dun. All right, here we go. You're going to see what's behind the door. That's right. Nothing very much exciting. It is a cupboard. What's in there? Not too much. It's just this door cupboard, guys. I've kind of ruined it now, haven't I? You guys are going to be so disappointed. You thought it was some kind of, like, gateway to Narnia or something. But nope, it is just a cupboard. Sucks to be you. You have ruined your childhood dream, just like a child finding out about Santa Claus. Mikhailescu Vladimir. I hope I've said your name right there, dude. I'm really bad at names. Says... I always wondered, did you read all the books behind you? Not all of them at all. My old man is got 40 years more reading experience than I do. And frankly, guys, at the moment, I'm having to read so many academic papers that the last thing that I want to do is really try and use more of my imagination to take me away from places. I'm quite a visual person, so probably really that's why I enjoy playing video games and watching movies at the moment more than reading books. So Mr. Havoc313 says, what is your first tier 10 tank? E100. I'm very interested to find out how many of you guys was the E100 the first tank? Because I think it's got to be an overwhelming majority of the World of Tanks population. Let's remember as well, the E100 was my first tier 10 tank 
back when the only tier 10s were heavy tank. There were no tier 10 tank destroyers, there were no tier 10 medium tanks, there were no tier 10 artillery. All there were were tier 10 heavies. Back then in clan wars, you took tier 9 mediums, which was the bat chap. Pretty crazy stuff. Okay, so I have magically changed clothes. No, that's just because I had to change my clothes because I'm getting so excited about answering all these questions. Let's continue. So if you could add any new tank to the game, what would it be and why? If you could remove any tank from the game, what would it be from why? If you could add a new game mode, what would it be and why? And what types of maps would you like to see added? So let me just prepare for half an hour while I have to answer this question. No, I'm just going to say what comes to my mind, because otherwise it's going to take me forever. Alright, if I could add any new tank to the game, what would it be and why? I think the Archer would be an interesting tank to add. You should go Wikipedia it up if you want to find out more about the British tank destroyer. Why? Because it has had up to 60 millimeters of frontal armor, it carried a 17 pounder, and it was on a Valentine. I think it'd be quite an interesting low tier tank destroyer, probably adding somewhere, depending on balance and what kind of rate of fire and special matchmaking they give it, up in the region of 4 to 6. So if I could remove any tank from the game, what would it be and why? I would have to say it would probably be the Fosh 155, just because that tank is it's too game changing. Also arguably maybe the Hesh ammo from the new British tier 10 tank destroyer, the 183mm. Why? Because again it's so game changing. All the other tanks are just balancing armour to gun, balancing armour gun to mobility, adding gun depression, stir it up in a pot, but then you add in two tanks, one which does 850 average damage per shot and has a three round auto loader and then one which can fire 1750 average damage with 250 plus pen fair enough it's hesh ammo and it won't be going in unless it hits a flat surface but still i feel that those two tier 10 tank destroyers they really do kind of break the game a little bit i'm really looking forward to playing them myself i probably think that the 183 is slightly more balanced just because arguably I think it's played by worse players and also its armour frontally at least is not very good at all. The Fosh 155 on the other hand is just sheer brutality. It's very very frustrating to get caught out by a 155 and to know that there's 2550 potential damage coming your way and there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it because predominantly most Fosh dri drivers I've seen are just firing premium rounds anyway with ridiculously high penetration. Still I'm not complaining like wah, 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 wah. complain 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 like I can deal with it I can deal with these tanks it's it just it detracts from the game a little bit for me. Anything with such ridiculously high alpha potential definitely discourages solo work and aggressive play. You really want to take out those kind of tank destroyers with multiple tanks, knowing that as soon as, for example, the Fosh 155 has to reload, that he's basically dead if he's got multiple opponents on him. And the 183, maybe he's going to do one of your guys for between 800 and then like 2000 health. But at least after that, he's got such a long reload and really poor armor that you need multiple enemies to go in and take him out. If I could add a new game mode, what would it be and why? I would like some kind of like a convoy game mode where you have to protect NPCs. Think about on Himmelsdorf for example, maybe it, uh, maybe an attacking team has like 10 tanks while the team that's defending the convoy might have more tanks. Now the attacking team have to focus down as much of the convoy as they can and the defending team have to protect their convoy. I think it could be quite a fun game game mode and it could encourage quite a lot of team play. I know that they've tried out lots of these modes in the VIP modes and I think most of their testing came down to the conclusion that our coordination in random play is not good enough and that they can have all of these funky game modes but apparently we just don't work together enough to make them viable. I think we saw a lot of that when Assault was added. I personally turned off Assault because it's very frustrating and I feel that the defending team has an overwhelming advantage. What types of maps would I like to see added? I think that they're doing a fantastic job with the maps that they're adding. I'd like to see one or two more city maps, some close quarters combat. I'd like another Himmelsdorf, I'd like another Runeberg, I'd like another Ensk, I'd like some close quarters combat maps to be added next. So thanks very much for your multiple questions slain, and I hope I gave you the answers that you were looking for. Okay, Mitt708, Mitt Romney, no I'm only trolling. 
says, QB, do you think Wargaming should implement night battles? I don't see really what this would add. Maybe you would just increase all the camo rating? Would you have to incorporate flares into the game as well? Would there be tanks that have flares that you can fire over the enemy to reduce their camo rating and reveal them? I think I'm not a World War II historian. I don't know how many night battles went on in World War II that had tanks. But I'm pretty sure that maybe they were more afraid of the anti-tank guns making hits on their tanks since so they were trying to avoid fights during the night in panzers. Many real-life World War II veterans who were tank aces will tell you that they were, by the end of it, or during it, they were more afraid of the anti-tank guns simply because they were so hard to spot. Sure, World of Tanks would be fun if they changed the weather on the maps, maybe. Maybe they should change, start by changing the weather. I think night battles would be something they would have to really think through. And whether it would add that much to the game, I'm not sure. I think maybe it's a cool idea, but I would personally rather see different weather conditions on the maps. And maybe what they could do is have it so that the different weather conditions affected how fast tanks could advance. Maybe it would change the ground resistance of some of the areas. That would be pretty cool. And then that would add variety as to how people play maps based on the weather. Now that would be something I'd be interested in. So moving on, Zimar96 says, What do you think about World of Tanks after my first game? I don't have a clear memory, but I really think that I was going, Oh, what is this? This doesn't quite make any sense. I think I was like very confused. I'll be honest, in my first 100 games, and this was when World of Tanks was very new, just coming out of closed beta, I didn't even understand what all the little numbers on the guns meant. I thought that the higher the accuracy went on the gun, I thought it was more accurate. <laughs> so I was like, wow, this gun, it's so accurate. <laughs> oh, this 105, it's amazing, it's so accurate. I also thought that for example, the I didn't understand how all the penetrations linked up. I didn't understand that it was the different ammo types for my first, like, 100 games or something. This was in closed beta. This game was really not very popular back then. The only thing that I knew that I wanted to do was to grow my tank. I think initially that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to grow my tank. I wanted to grow my tank. It wasn't about playing skillfully. Of course, I wanted to win because obviously winning would help you accelerate your game quicker. But for me, it was more about about growing my tank. And I remember the first time I got a Kolobanov's medal in my VK3601. That was in my like first thousand games or something. I was like, yeah, that's what it's about. And the first time I got the Tiger, I felt like I was the man. And then I got the Tiger 2 and I was like, oh my God, I can carry games. And then I got the E75 and I was like, oh my God, I'm a beast. And then I got the E100 and I realized I have very little armor. But it was my only tier 10, and I played it a hell of a lot in Clan Wars. All in all, you guys know I absolutely adore this game. I wouldn't do as much as I do on the game, both for entertainment value and also just for pure pleasure for myself, if I didn't like World of Tank. After the first game, I didn't think this was an amazing game or anything, but I, I just wanted to get back in there and play it some more, and I guess that's exactly what you want from a game. Thanks a lot for your questions, Zimar96, I appreciate it. So, the final question asked for us by Uber Alessandro says, Have you ever taken off all your clothes, covered yourself in Vaseline, and pretended you're a slug? If I had done that, I probably wouldn't admit it to 30,000 people. I'm definitely not going to go and cover myself in Vaseline now and roll around in like slug fashion for you. And before I think, stupidly and go, ah, oh, if I get 100,000 subscribers, I'll do that. No, no, I'm not going to cover myself in Vaseline and pretend I'm a slug. I did Google this because I thought this was such a creative thing that I thought, maybe this guy is just a genius. But no, this is apparently like a meme. So yeah, cool, I get it. I think the closest I've ever come to this is when I'm feeling very, 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 very lazy in bed and you're just like, Rah. or maybe when you're kind of like doing a water slide outside. Haven't done that in ages and ages and ages. But you know when you put out like a plastic sheet and like put um, washing up liquid all over it and like hose when it's really hot outside and just like slide down it. So I think that's probably the closest I've come to pretending I was a slug and being covered in stuff. Anyway, thank you very much for the question. Shout out to you for asking probably biggest troll question there was and thumbs up to everyone who voted it up. Anyway guys, I hope you've liked this video and I've been able to answer your questions. I'll be doing more of these in the future. So guys, I'm sorry this has taken me so long to do, but I hope you're pleased with the answers. 
I'll be definitely looking to do more Q&As like this in the future for my YouTube audience. And remember that I do do Ask Me Anythings like this. I recently did an Ask Me Anything on Reddit. You can find the link down below in the description box. And I also frequently answer questions and do Ask Me Anythings while I'm doing my World of Tanks streams during the breaks. So guys, just a big thank you again for now 30,000 subscribers. I can't believe it. I'm going to keep working hard to give you guys the content that you want and you deserve. Thank you all so much for backing me up. I really appreciate it. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the vlog that I just released recently. I hope I was open and honest with you guys and I gave you a little bit of an insight into what I get up to with the Pepperdy. Again, just a big thank you for backing me up and supporting me so well. Thanks a lot for watching the video. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.